here's where I am in my little uh, maybe vintage um, journal and ephemera collecting process. I, you know, I had put some gesso on some of the images in here, and then I was going through, and I just decided the pages were way too thin, so I've started gluing some together, and some I glued two pages, some I glued three, you know, I just went in and started gluing, and I just did another batch, so these back here are not dry yet, and then I remembered, you know, I pulled it up and looked at it and my spine was getting all wonky and I just about had a panic attack because I had forgotten about the golden rule. Remember, Dee Dee Willingham taught us all of this way back when, when you're, you know, working in a glue bound book like this, you need to go a little bit in the front and then do a little bit in the back, a little bit in the front, a little bit in the back. Because if you don't, your spine is going to get super wonky. It's just going to, it's going to go crazy. So yeah, I, I managed to um, avoid that, but now I need to go to the back and glue some of the pages. So I'm, okay, I'm gonna do one for you, but I'm not gonna sit here and show you how to glue pages together because I think you can probably figure it out. But I'm gonna use a damp paintbrush just to make the glue spread better. And I'm going to use this um, reptile glue. This has been sitting for a while, and it's starting to turn. I'm not sure if it's the bottle that's turning or if it's the glue. I think it's the glue. It just doesn't feel as white as it once was, which is kind of concerning, but not so much so it's going to make me not use it because, you know, I'm not, I'm not out for the uh, archival thing. But if you are, you might want to be careful with this. So I do this, spread it toward the edges first, because that's really important to me is that my edges get covered. And then just kind of do this thing. And then glue the page next to it down and use my card to smush it all out. And that's it. And then I usually will put a piece of wax paper, you know, between the pages until they get dry, or fairly dry, and then I'll just stand it up and let it kind of finish drying like that. So that's it, and yes, they're gonna get buckly, and they're gonna get textury, and that's perfectly fine. So, gluing the pages together, and I'll probably kind of finish, finish doing that at some point. And let me get this out of the way. Deal with that later. Oh no, where'd my little lid go? Oh, it's so tiny, there it is. <laughs> lid back on the glue. So glue in the pages together and then I am printing out some of the vintage ephemera that I am downloading from you know Victor. I told y'all about last time and I printed some out you know I have that stack that I would printed out of the Ukrainian people wherever they went. Here they are. Uh, yep. Okay, you know these, which I just printed out on regular paper, and then I, he has this like collection of postcard images, and I printed those, some of those out on some coffee dyed paper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just looks fabulous, because they're already, you know, kind of aged looking, and then printing it out on the coffee stained paper just made it even more awesome makes it kind of splotchy and you know it looks like it's stained and I love that so yeah if you've got some coffee dyed or tea stained paper um, run it through your printer it mine did fine you know I mean the, what's the worst that can happen it just gets up in there and gets jammed and tears up and you have to clean it out and then you go okay my printer didn't like that I won't do it anymore but mine did fine so um this afternoon, I just stained a bunch more paper. 
It's in there drying, and as soon as it dries, I'm going to print out some more stuff from Victor to use because, you know, you can never have too much stuff. And, um, okay, before I start that one, no, I should probably do this first. So these, remember these? Oh, I meant to try to confirm if this was Omnigel. Let me see if I've still got some Omnigel. Found some. It's almost empty. But this, I believe, is what I used on here. And I think, I'm pretty sure it is because it's got a glossy finish. And Omnigel has a glossy finish. I don't know if they've made a matte finish one over the years because I've had this for a while. It's a Speedball product. You can get this on Amazon. I have a link in my video description for my little Amazon shop where I just put things in there that I order from Amazon that I like and that I use. And I believe there's a link for this, this in there. <clears throat> and Amazon will pay me probably two cents if you buy from that link. So woohoo! Yeah, you don't have to. Whatever. But Omnigel is an acrylic polymer image transfer medium stuff. And all I did was I actually did it on the whole sheet of cardstock. Let me show you. Here. This is one of those canvas court cardstock, printed cardstock sheets. And what I did, oh look, something stuck to it. Well, whatever. I just took the Omni Gel and I brushed it on, let it dry. I brushed it on this way, let it dry, and then I brushed it on this way and let it dry, and then I brushed it on this way again <laughs> and let it dry. So yeah, alternate the way you brush it on, let it dry between coats. I only did three coats and that is actually perfect. And you can do this with um, any kind of like a gel medium will work fine. I just like this Omni Gel. It's strong. It just gives me consistently good results. So let me show you um, what to do after it dries. You know, I've, like I said, I've left the sheet like this for a couple of years, so you don't have to use it immediately. But I just cut out the image that I want, like so, and then you put it in warm water. I didn't anticipate on doing this right now, so I'm going to have to go get warm water and all that, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I've got me a little bit of warm water. And, you know, you want it warm, but not hot, hot. Um, I haven't had the problem with the Omni Gel, but with, I think I used a gel medium one time, and the water was really way too hot, and it just melted <laughs> my whole thing. It was bad. I mean, it worked. I was, like, rubbing the paper off, and it was working great, but my image was starting to stretch, <laughs> and it got a hole in it. Yeah, so it, it needs to be warm, but not hot, hot. And you just want to soak your little images for a few minutes. And I've got another video where I did this on the whole video and probably did it a lot better. So I'll try to find that for you. Um, but I like this. This is super easy and it just makes your image a little bit transparent so that it um, adds more dimension to your stuff, to your page. So these are the ones I've already done. I've already peeled them and see they're just practically see-through so that's what we're doing we're just gonna make our printed cardstock image into a decal and you can use magazine images um, almost anything really okay once they start getting kind of soft when you start rubbing the back and then the paper starts coming off that's what you want that means it's ready. So that's all you do is just use friction with your fingers and rub off all the paper. And I normally do this at my kitchen sink. I do make, you know, the little dish of water and let them soak. But then once I get most of the paper off, I just run the faucet, and hold these under the faucet, and then take my toothbrush to get the rest of the paper off. But I will just pretend like we've got running water. I'm just getting, I can feel the paper on there. 
So that's what I'm doing is just rubbing wherever I feel the paper. And then you can take, this is just a soft toothbrush that we use for cleaning. And you can do this and kind of rub off the excess little bits. You will not get 100% of the paper off no matter how hard you try. You, you're going to look at it and you're going to go, ooh, yeah, it's like completely transparent. This is awesome. Then when it dries, it's going to be cloudy <laughs> again. <laughs> and then I'll show you what I do about that. Because there is a little, a little kind of sort of fix. Um, where you can get them to be pretty darn transparent. Okay, I really can't feel much more coming off. So I think that's good. And see, here's the thing about these. I've got the, the uh, transfer medium, the gel medium. That's not what I used. The Omni Gel on this side, right? So the paper was on this side. Rubbed all the paper off. Now when I go to glue it down, I'm going to glue it down just like this. This is now going to be the top, the front. So um, this glossy Omni Gel side, see I don't care that it's glossy because I'm going to glue it down anyway. And if you glue it down with a, you know, a matte finish glue or matte medium, it's not going to make much difference. But I really like to do the bottom side up, the side where you've just peeled off all the paper. I like that to be the top side, which means text doesn't work so well with that. <laughs> Anytime I do this with something that has text, then I have to, you know, lay it down with my gel medium side up. But um, otherwise, I like this side up. It just, when you do it, you'll see that the image is crisper from this side, and it just looks better. So, I mean, it's really up to you. That's just what I like. So, I'm going to go ahead and peel these two and then I'll show you what I do next to kind of get rid of the haze. See this, gosh I wish I had a black piece of paper so that you could really see. Okay really I have nothing dark or black. Got it! <laughs> so yeah you can see right now it looks pretty good. It's maybe just a little bit hazy. It's just now starting to dry. But once it finishes gets finished drying, it's going to be really hazy. And then I'll show you what I do to combat that in a moment. Now my little decals are completely dry. And if you can see, they are pretty cloudy. Right? They're also kind of brittle at this point, so you want to handle them really carefully. They can just snap in two and they tear really easily. So, yeah, got to be careful with them. But if you kind of see, these over here that I've treated, I use Daddy Vans on them. And the ones I've treated with Daddy Vans, see, they just, they're not cloudy hardly at all. See the difference? And the Daddy Vans can kind of cause a gluing problem if you use too much. I just use a little bit and uh, I just keep them in here so, you know, they're just kind of soaking in Daddy Vans until I get ready to use them. Then when I get ready to use them, I take a paper towel and I just rub them down really good. Get as much of the Daddy Vans off as I can and then glue them down and they're nice and transparent. So, let's do that with these. I've got a piece of plastic wrap. And my Daddy Vans All Natural Beeswax Furniture Polish. I don't know if I still have my ding sound. If I don't, I usually make a ding sound <laughs> right after that. <laughs> I bet I've still got it. I just don't know if I remember how to find it and put it in. Yeah, oh well, it's been a while. Okay, so I've got a brush, my designated Daddy Vans brush. And I just put these, this is the, the paper side. This is the um, um, Omni, Omni Gel side. 
I'm going to put a little bit on the Omni Gel side just to stick it down to the plastic so that it stays put. And here, let's, let's move in. There we go. Now I'm going to take the Daddy Vans and then just brush it on here and see that white just kind of disappears. It's just absorbing the Daddy Vans, which has, you know, natural oils and beeswax. And like I said, it'll do just fine with gluing it down as long as you wipe this off real good before you go to glue it. Okay? Let's do another one. Again, just be careful so that you don't rip your decal. Then if you do, you just glue it down in pieces so that it looks, you know, extra um, distressed. <laughs> yeah. And there we have it. I just cracked it, but it didn't tear off, so it's all right. I was looking up in the camera display thing to make sure I was still in frame. That's what I get. There we go. And now the moth, and when I cut this one out, I just went ahead and cut off his little antenna because it's just I don't like fussy cutting, and I didn't fussy cut these, as you can see. I just kind of went around the edge. Um, but yeah, the antennas were just too fiddly for me. And you don't really have to fussy cut these kinds of images because as long as, you know, you do it right, you take the time to get rid of as much of the white backing as you can, it's not going to show. There it is. Okay, now I am just going to fold over this plastic wrap and leave those like that until I'm ready to use them. So, um, let's see. That's most of the prepping that I'm doing. I'm going to have to wait till all of my tea stain papers dry and then I'm going to press them flat and then I'm going to print stuff on them tomorrow and then I'm going to cut all that out. So I'll have to show you that later. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to show today was, you know, doing this, collecting all this vintage stuff and getting it all together reminded me of another vintage sort of kind of journal that I did this one. Pretty sure I've done flip throughs before, but um, I, I want to do it again because <laughs> this is why I do these and I keep them because I really like going back through them and just seeing what I did. And sometimes I'm like, oh, that's great. And other times I'm eh, not so much, but just feeling them and looking at them is inspiring to me. So this is some extra. I think I had soaked these in glycerin or something. I mean, they feel almost like fabric now. They were just paper tags. And I'm pretty sure it was glycerin that I soaked them in. But they sure do feel cool. I mean, they're, they are seriously, they're like fabric. So yeah, that was something I've used in here. And this is just super painty, messy. It was kind of a combination use it up journal but kind of with a sort of vintage theme because I had a bunch of um, vintage, not all vintage, but a lot of vintage ish images to use. 
but I still kept a lot of color in it as well. And the pages are really textury, they're buckly, they're thick, and they are fabulous. Some of them don't make any sense. Like I said, it was just kind of a glue it down, use it up situation. Journal for no reason. Just for the joy of gluing stuff down and throwing paint onto paper. I like this one. And I like Edgar over here. And some of them I didn't even finish out. And yeah, I was super hard on the pages. <laughs> it's a spiral bound thing. So quite a few of them are... Uh, <laughs> they've given up the will to be bound. <laughs> They're breaking free. that one. I think that was off of an old calendar or something. So that was another kind of sort of vintage. No, oh, that's not really vintage, but it's just a little bit awesome. Heck yeah. Um, journal, whatever that I did. It's fat and happy. <laughs> so hopefully this next one will be fat and happy, but a little bit different. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get more into it. Maybe we'll actually stick something into the journal next time. That's my plan anyway, because this should be all dry. And then hopefully I'll have all my stuff together. And then uh, we'll actually start working in it, maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. The end. <laughs>